Good early morning, everyone. Uh, my time in Arizona is coming to an end and I'm heading back to New Jersey today. So I wanted to get on here really quickly and do our next lesson for today. And we are just starting a review period. So again, congratulations for making it here. So let's go ahead and see what the course has to say for us during this review period. All right, review number one, introduction. Beginning with today, we will have a series of review periods. Each of them will cover five of the ideas already presented, starting with the first and ending with the 50th. There will be a few short comments after each of the ideas, which you should consider in your review. In the practice periods, the exercises should be done as follows. Begin the day by reading the five ideas, with the comments included, Thereafter, it is not necessary to follow any particular order in considering them, though each one should be practiced at least once. Devote two minutes or more to each practice period, thinking about the idea and the related comments after, after reading them over. Do this as often as possible during the day. If any of the five ideas appeal more to you than the others, concentrate on that one. At the end of the day, however, be sure to review them all once more. Uh, so basically, when you're reading these ideas, just focus on the one that sticks out to you the most and allow it to like pass through your mind into your consciousness. And then the other ones, if they don't resonate as much, just read through them and move forward. It is not necessary to cover the comments that follow each idea literally or thoroughly in the practice periods. Try rather to emphasize the central point and think about it as part of your review of the idea to which it relates. After you have read the idea and the related comments, the exercises should be done with your eyes closed and when you are alone and in a quiet place if possible. So make that space for meditation and take the review period seriously. This is emphasized for practice periods at your stage of learning. It will be necessary, however, that you learn to require no special settings in which to apply what you have learned. You will need your learning you will need your learning most in situations that appear to be upsetting rather in those that already seem to be calm and quiet. The purpose of your learning is to enable you to bring the quiet with you and to heal distress and turmoil. This is not done by avoiding them and seeking a haven of isolation for yourself. You will yet learn that peace is a part of you and requires only that you be there to embrace any situation in which you see you are. And finally, you will learn that there is no limit to where you are so that your peace is everywhere as you are. You will note that for review purposes, some of the ideas are not given in quite their original form. Use them as they are given here. It is not necessary to return to the original statements nor to apply the ideas as was suggested then. We are now emphasizing the relationships among the first 50 of the ideas we have covered and the cohesiveness of the thought system to which they are leading you. Okay, so once again, it's just a review. Whatever resonates with you, lean a little bit more into that. That's it. Okay, so... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. There are actually lessons here on the next page. I almost skipped to the second book. Whoops, I guess I am a little tired. Okay, so lesson 51. The review for today covers the following ideas. One, nothing I see means anything. The reason this is so is that I see nothing and nothing has no meaning. It is necessary that I recognize this, that I may learn to see what I think I see now is taking place of vision. I must let it go by realizing it has no meaning so that vision may take its place. Number two, I have given what I see all the meaning it has for me. I have judged everything I look upon and it is this, the, it is this and only this I see. This is not vision. It is merely an illusion of reality because my judgments have been made quite apart from reality. I am willing to recognize 
the lack of validity in my judgments because I want to see. My judgments have hurt me and I do not want to see according to them. Number three, I do not understand anything I see. How can I understand what I see when I have judged it amiss? What I see is the projection of my own errors of thought. I do not understand what I see because it is not understandable. There is no sense in trying to understand it, but there is every reason to let it go and make room for what can be seen and understood and loved. I can exchange what I see now for this merely by willing by my by being willing to do so. Is not this a better choice than the one I made before? Number 4. These thoughts do not mean anything. The thoughts of which I am aware do not mean anything because I am trying to think without God. What I call any thoughts are not my real thoughts. My real thoughts are the thoughts I think with God. I am not aware of them because I have made my thoughts to take their place. I am willing to re I am willing to recognize that my thoughts do not mean anything and to let them go. I choose to have them be replaced by what they were intended to replace. My thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts I think with God. Number five, I am never upset for the reason I think. Such a good one. I am never upset for the reason I think because I am constantly trying to justify my thoughts. I am constantly trying to make them true. I make all things my enemies so that my anger is justified and my attacks are warranted. I have not realized how much I have misused everything I see by assigning this role to it. I have done this to defend a thought system that has hurt me and that I no longer want. I am willing to let it go. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so now let's see what a year of forgiveness has to say about lesson number 51, all these review periods. Review one, part one. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know is Jesus. It is important to review some of the concepts and ideas introduced to your mind so far. As you look back over the lessons, we want you to remember them. We want you to remember we do this work together to relieve your mind of suffering caused by your misdirected, misinterpreted, and distorted thoughts. We work together to retrain the mind to align with love. That is what we're doing. We also retrain the mind to become more peaceful so that you can hear your inner guidance. We work together to demonstrate that we understand you do not know what's in your best interest. When you suffer, you are given direction by your emotional guidance system that tells you that you are off track. When you do these lessons because you know there must be a better way than the way you live now. We want you to understand the importance of reviewing these lessons. It demonstrates that you have learned some interesting things and you need to review, practice, and use them in your day whenever you encounter a situation that these lessons become applicable as a way to relieve your suffering. These thoughts, ideas, lessons, beliefs, and concepts become natural at some point. You might already use them when you get distressed, angry, or frightened. I certainly do. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and this is the most powerful mind training program available to you as Westerners at this time. It was designed for the Western mind to be used during these times by those of you motivated to bring into existence a more loving experience for you, your friends, your family, and the planet. Love that. We want you to remember this when you slip or become disillusioned with this work because it happens. You, mu you get tired of the practice periods. The ego nags at you. People upset you. You feel this practice makes extra work, but it is not extra work. It's lessons, it lessens the effort over time. Over time, you will find that you do not battle with yourself and others as much. You do not regret or fear as much. All those things use up your precious energy and you come more into alignment and you have access to more energy, creativity, and guidance. 
Do not despair when you struggle or have difficulties with these lessons. We encourage you to continue, even if you've done it imperfectly or that could have, or you could have done more, but you didn't. Make tomorrow the day that you decide, I'm going to do it exactly as described in A Course in Miracles. I'm going to dedicate myself to these lessons because I have seen what my mind creates. I have seen what my mind gets up to when not trained by a loving teacher, and I don't want to spend the rest of my life experiencing that. That really is what we get rid of here. We eliminate your suffering, fears, and eventually your sickness and death. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and we will see you tomorrow. Wow. So that last sentence was a mic drop moment. <laughs> we eliminate your suffering, fears, and eventually your sickness and death. To the skeptics out there, <laughs> give this a try if those are some things that you want to get rid of. Well, everyone, have a beautiful day today. Enjoy doing these review lessons. And um, if your ego nags you, it's all good. Just say thank you and keep moving. And I will see you again tomorrow for lesson number 52. Take care. Love to all.